It requires a good amount of work to create an array of values and ensure that the array has no duplicated values. In this tutorial, we will dive into sets to make such a process so much easier. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. ECMAScript 6 added several new ways to create collections. A set is one of those and offers a distinct advantage of preventing duplicate values. We're going to explore the use of sets and the different commands that allow you to work with them. So let's say you want to create a collection of data, but you don't want any duplicates. If you have been around JavaScript for some time, you would reach for an array in order to set up a collection. However, to ensure that no duplicates were entered, you would need to check each new value and make sure it did not already exist. A set would make this much easier. So let's look at doing it that way. I'm going to open the console here and I'm going to create an initial set. The way we do that is we declare a variable and then we use new set, uppercase s, to create that as a set, similar to what we would do if we we're creating an array with a constructor. We would use new array. So now I have a set created and I can now add values to that set using the add method. So I'm going to add some fruit here to this set. There I have an apple. Let's add an orange. And one more. Let's add blueberry. All right, so we have a set of three items, apple, orange, blueberry. Now, what would happen if we were to add apple again? Let's take a look at that. Use add, and if it's the exact same value, it simply doesn't add it. So we still have the three items. We don't have a fourth item in there. With an array, it would go ahead and add that. So a set prevents us from having duplicate values. It gives us a collection without those duplicate values. Now, what if you already had an array and that array had some duplicates? How could we use a set to eliminate those duplicates? Well, that's pretty simple as well. Let's create a new set here. And this time, I'm going to pass an array into the constructor that creates the set. And notice the array I'm passing in. It has a duplicate of two, a duplicate of three. Both of those are duplicates. Well, let's see what happens when it creates a set out of that array. Let's go ahead and take a look at two, collection two. And if we take a look at those entries, we can see one, two, three, four, five, six. So all the duplicates are gone. So simply by passing the array into the constructor that we use to create the set will eliminate any duplicates. So this new construct of creating a set is pretty simple to use, not too difficult. You use new set to create a, a set and then you use add to add to it. However, how valuable is this if we're not able to work with it? So let's look at some of the commands that are available to work with a set and some of the different ways we can work with a set. Now, first thing I want to take a look at is I'm going to enter the set here and open it up and take a look at the prototype. The prototype is going to show us which methods are available for working with a set. There we can see the add method. That's how we go ahead and add things to the set. Now, some of these I think are important to be aware of. So we're going to look at a few of these. First, let's take a look at size. So if I do col2.size, it simply returns how many items are in that set. That is like the length property on an array. Now, another 
method that's available is we can use delete to remove an item from a set. So let's say with the set col1, I want to remove apple. So I would do col1.delete. Delete is the method for doing that. And then I indicate what I want to remove. Now if we take a look at it, we see the apple is gone. We're down to two items within that set. Now something else that is valuable is the has method. This allows you to check whether a value is currently in the set or not. So let's use col2.has and I want to see if the number 2 is in there. And it returns true, indicating that yes, it's already in there. So if we were to try to add it, it would not add it because it already exists. Now many times with collections, you need to be able to iterate over them. And sets have a for each method that allow us to do that. Now for each is a higher order function that takes a function as a parameter. And if you haven't worked with that in the past, I, I'll include a link to a tutorial on higher order functions and passing functions into other functions. But let's take a look at how we would use for each on a set to iterate over the values. So I'm going to jump to Sublime to do this one. And first off, let me set up a set. I'm going to call it collection col3. And I'll set it up just by passing an array. That's a pretty simple way to do that. And then I also want to declare another variable, sum. And I'm going to set that equal to 0 initially. OK, so there we have our variables. Now let's go ahead and iterate through the col3 set. We use for each. That is the method that's available. And what we pass into this method is a function. And that function is going to accept each value of the set as a parameter. So for each will iterate through all the items in the set and pass into the function each one of those each time it goes through it. So we'll get the one first, the two, the three, four, and five, and so on. So we set that function up by including a variable for that value that is passed in. And then we declare the body of the function. And what I'm going to do is I want to check to see if val is greater than 2, then I'm going to add it to sum. Just like that. And then down here at the bottom, we'll go ahead and log it to the console the value of sum. So it should get everything greater than 2. So we should get. 3 plus 4 plus 5. So we should get 18 at the end. So now we save that. Let me go ahead and refresh. And there we get 18. And so for each allows us to iterate through a set. Now, one last note with sets. If you need the features of an array to work with a set, you can just convert that set to an array. And that is pretty simple to do with the spread operator. If you're not familiar with the spread operator, I'll include a link to that in the description section of this tutorial as well. So let's take a look at how that would happen. Let's go ahead and create our col2 set again. Now notice this one had duplicates, 2, 3, 2, 3, those are duplicates. So I'm going to go ahead and press return and create that set. Now let's convert that to an array. And we do that with the spread operator. So we, the spread operator is going to take that set and spread each of its elements apart. And it will include those in an array because we've included an array literal here. So this will create an array of the items in the col2 set. So now if I press return and then take a look at the array, I can see that we have an array of six items and none of those duplicates are present. And so there 
we now have an array without duplicates that we can use all the other features that are available with arrays if we choose to. All right, before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.